Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and practical topic, tremor. Tremor and its types, the types of tremor, a rapid recall. But what is a tremor? A tremor is an involuntary, a rhythmic, oscillatory movement produced by contraction of reciprocally innervated muscles. So it's an involuntary, but basically a rhythmic movement and an oscillatory movement. This is tremor. Basically, tremors can be divided into physiological tremor or pathological tremor. Physiological tremor usually it's about 10 hertz per 10 hertz frequency and pathological tremor is about 5 hertz frequency. The physiological tremor we do not know the exact pathogenesis but probably it is because of the passive vibrations of cardiac origin. The pathologic tremor uh, it depends but most of the time it is presumed to be in the Thalamus. Right. Suppose a person has got tremor, a patient presents with tremor. How do we approach the tree and branch system? So the tree is the tremor and how do we approach the branches? Basically we divide it into two types. The basic clinical approach when a person comes with tremor is that we see it whether it's a resting tremor present at rest or action tremor whether it is present during action. So the fundamental approach will be to divide tremors into resting tremors that is tremors present at rest and action tremors that is tremors which are present during action. The resting tremor again are basically two types. One the resting tremor which decreases with action. Classic example is Parkinson's disease. So person who's got Parkinson's disease he's got tremors at rest but when we give a glass full of water and ask him to sip it, he is able to sip the water well. There is no fall of water because though the tremor is present at rest, it disappears when an action is initiated. The classic example is Parkinson's disease. The other resting tremor is the rubral tremor, presumed to be because of the red nucleus or cerebellar outflow. It is also a resting tremor, but it worsens with action. So resting tremor are two types, one the Parkinson's tremor which decreases with action, second the rubral tremor which worsens with action. This is about resting tremor. When we come to action tremor, again action tremor is basically two types. One a goal directed tremor, a goal directed tremor, second is the postural tremor. A goal directed or an intentional tremor is because of the cerebellum. Here the tremor is present but it increases as the action is increased and when it reaches the target example the finger nose test it increases in amplitude as it nears the target intention tremor. Classic example is a cerebellar tremor a goal directed intentional tremor. The action tremor the one is the goal directed tremor second is the postural tremor. Postural tremor is a tremor which occurs in postures that is sustained hand sustained holding the hands outstretched holding the hands outstretched is a posture when that is a posture if a tremor appears when the hands are held outstretched you call that as postural tremor again postural tremor basically are two types one is a symmetrical tremor present in both hands the classic example is physiological tremor which we see in physiological states like anxiety fear or metabolic states like hyperthyroidism or hypoglycemia. This is a physiological tremor. Second is the essential tremor. It is asymmetrical, very important difference. Physiological tremor is a symmetrical tremor. Both are present in postural. Postural tremors are two types. One is the symmetrical tremor, which is a physiological tremor. Second is the asymmetrical tremor, which is an essential tremor. Usually there are no associated neurological findings. That's why it's known as essential tremor and it runs in family. Sometimes that's why it's known as familial essential tremor. Very important 
point, um, uh, MCQ question, a very important point is that the commonest tremor which we see is the essential tremor. So essential tremor is the commonest type of tremor. So this is a broad overview of how to approach tremor. So tremors basically can be divided into resting tremor or an action tremor. Resting tremor basically are two types. One is the resting tremor of Parkinson's disease which decreases during action and therefore person is able to take a glass of water without spilling. Second is the rubral tremor which increases when they start moving the limb. The action tremor could be of two types. One, the goal directed type that is a cerebellar tremor. It increases as the target is, is, is comes near. Second is the action tremor which is of the postural type. Again two types. One is symmetrical physiological tremor. Second is the asymmetrical that is essential tremor. Essential tremor is an action tremor which increases with action and therefore essential tremor they cannot take a glass of water and drink it without the water slipping off. So they cannot sip the water, the glass of water without the water slipping off. So one important difference between the Parkinson's tremor and essential tremor is that Parkinson's tremor is able to drink a glass of water easily without the water slipping off. But essential tremor, they cannot drink a glass of water without the water slipping off. Very important point. Having understood the basic approach, now let's see the salient points of each tremor. Now let's talk about the resting tremor. Resting tremor, as I said, the most important is the Parkinson's tremor. The Parkinson's tremor is a pill rolling movement. So there will be flexion extension of the fingers and abduction and adduction of the thumb. So flexion and extensions of the finger and abduction, adduction of the thumb. This is classic. This is known as pill rolling tremor. And Parkinson's tremor is usually asymmetric to begin with. And as the disease progresses, it becomes symmetric. And finally, they are bed bone. Hohn Yaher classification. So to begin with, it is asymmetric. It decreases with the action and therefore person is able to take a glass full of water and sip well without the water falling off. The treatment is the anticholinergic drugs, trichlorhexphenidine. Trichlorhexphenidine, uh, the generic name is Pasigen. Sometimes dopaminic drugs are also useful. The rupral tremor, that is also a resting tremor, but it worsens with action. High amplitude tremor. So high amplitude rhythm in 2 to 5 hertz. Wing beating tremor is otherwise known as wing beating tremor. The lesion is in the red nucleus, that's why it's known as rubral tremor. We see it usually in, in diseases like multiple sclerosis or Wilson's disease. This is all we need to know about resting tremor. Now let's focus our attention on the action tremor. Action tremors are basically two types. One is the goal directed tremor that is cerebellar tremor. Second is the postural tremor which could be either essential tremor or physiological tremor. The goal directed tremor is the cerebellar tremor. So what happens? It is an action tremor but worsens as the person is reaches the target when it comes closer and closer to the target the tremor also increases in amplitude and it is not able to exactly and precisely touch the target it may undershoot or overshoot and there could be a high amplitude very classic cerebellar tremor finger nose incoordination the postural tremor we see these tremors when the person holds the hands outstretched so the tremors found in the poaches that is holding the hands outstretched. Again, it could be two types. One is the physiological tremor. Second is the essential tremor. Physiological tremor is the, we see it in two important conditions. One is hyperadrenergic states. That is when the person has got anxiety or fear or in an altered metabolic states like hyperthyroidism or hypoglycemia. So essential tremor, it is symmetrical in onset, very important. Unlike, sorry, the physiological tremor is symmetrical in onset, unlike essential tremor, which is asymmetrical. So physiological tremor, that is thyrotoxicosis, hypoglycemia, fear or anxiety, they are symmetrical in onset. They are because of the enhanced hyper, hyperadrenergic states like fear, anxiety or metabolic states like hyperthyroidism or or hypoglycemia. It is symmetrical nonsense. Next we will talk about the essential tremor which is the commonest type of tremor. 
it is a postural tremor to begin with it is asymmetric usually associated with runs in fam family in family members so it is otherwise known as familial type of tremor it is of low frequency because its pathological is about 4 to 8 hertz it is unassociated with other neurological findings that's why it's known as essential tremor it runs in families that's why it's known as familial essential tremor it is asymmetric unlike the physiological tremor which is symmetrical essential tremor is asymmetric and then and unlike parkinson's disease which decreases with action this increases with action and therefore persons with essential tremor they cannot even drink a glass of water without the water slipping off so important difference between the parkinson's tremor and essential tremor is that parkinson's tremor decreases with action and therefore they are able to sip a glass of water without the water slipping off whereas essential tremor the tremor worsens with action and therefore they cannot sip a glass of water without the water slipping off an important difference between the physiological tremor and essential tremor is that physiological tremor anxiety or hyperthyroidism they are symmetrical whereas essential tremor is asymmetrical and another very interesting point about essential tremor is that it decreases on taking alcohol alcohol ameliorates the tremor very important point alcohol decreases the intensity of tremor the treatment of essential tremor is beta blockers propranolol about 80 to 200 mg per day or we can give barbiturates like primidone 25 mg bd or tid or we can give clonazepam so these are all the important tremors by which we can approach clinically a simplified clinical approach and and can come to the conclusion clinically what is the type of tremor and how we should prefer, proceed there are other two important types of tremor one is the psychogenic tremor hysterical tremor these people feign illness they produce tremor tremor is not actually present they produce tremor so as to get the sympathy sympathy of the attendants attention seeking behavior a very interesting point is that when there is tremor and when you drop when you try to hold a particular point for example if they have tremor in the wrist when you hold the wrist the tremor starts appearing at the elbow or then at the shoulder joint so the tremor starts you will be when you try to hold it the tremor also starts moving away it is as if your the doctor is trying to chase the tremor so the chasing the tremor the tremor moving off as the doctor tries to examine is one of the classic findings of a hysterical tremor or a psychogenic tremor yeah the other important tremor sometimes we call it as tremor or myoclonus is the palatal tremor or palatal myoclonus one important point about the palatal tremor is like unlike other tremors this palatal tremor persists even during sleep most of the tremors disappear during sleep whereas palatal tremor persists during sleep and the lesion is the gullein molare triangle easy to remember is by the mnemonic rid r i d you try to get rid of it that's the common usage which we use so remember rid r i d R for red nucleus, I for inferior olivary nucleus, D for dentate nucleus. So this is the triangle, red, red nucleus, inferior olivary nucleus, dentate nucleus. So if there's a lesion here, there could be palatal tremor or palatal myoclonus. We can try uh, lots of treatment, but many are not successful, like we can give clonazepam or sodium valproate. So this is an overview of tremor, a rapid recall of tremor. Very important is to approach a person with tremor how do we approach clinically approach a person with tremor and diagnose it clinically and treat it resting tremor action tremor that will be the fundamental way to approach a tremor i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye